Hey everybody, this is Steve Winward. Have you ever had a scenario where you have hundreds of forms that have been filled out by people, either handwritten and scanned in, or they digitally filled it out and they sent it to you, and then you had to enter that into another system? If so, this video is for you. I'm gonna walk you through what Power Platform's AI Builder service is, and how you can create a form process where you can actually train a model to learn what does a form look like for you, and what are the individual fields inside of that form. You can then automate that by extracting the individual fields from any form that you have automatically. I'm then going to show you how you can take the results of that and then use Power Automate Desktop RPA to take those pieces of information and automatically populate a web application form and submit it for you. I think this is a really awesome example of how you can use low code to save a ton of time. Now, this video is going to be structured where first I'm going to walk you through the demo. And then I'm going to walk you through building the AI builder model. And then I'll show you how I use Power Automate Desktop RPA to tie it all together. Everything that I'm going to be showing in terms of the form, the sample forms that I'm using are all going to be posted on GitHub. Even the web application that I'm using with Power Automate RPA, I've also posted that code on GitHub as well if you wanted to recreate that. Let's go ahead and switch over to my laptop and let me show you what the demo looks like. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got the Word document that I sent out to everybody in my organization that's coming to the food event, and I asked them to fill this out. Now, some of them digitally signed this, some of them printed this out and filled it out by hand and then scanned it back in. And now I've got a whole slew of files that I don't really know what the best way is to process all of these. So let's just take a look at a few samples. So this is one where somebody filled it out in Word and just sent it over to me in PDF. That's one example. I have other examples that look like this, where they wrote it out by hand and then scanned it back in and sent it to me as a PDF. Now, what I want to do is I want to have a way that I can take one of these files, any of these files, extract the fields automatically, and then do something to automate that. Now, I also have a form here where if I can get all the information into the form where it's got the same fields that are requested by the Word document, then what I can do is take a list of all of the input and export that as Excel. So the ultimate goal here is to find a way to automate taking input like this, populating the web app, and then automating that process. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like in action. So I'm going to go to a Power Automate flow that I've already set up. I'm going to run this. And what we're going to do is we're going to specify a single file here. In this case, we're going to choose one of the handwritten examples. So we'll go ahead and choose uh, the third option. We'll specify this as a PDF file. Go ahead and say run. And so now what this is going to do is it's going to take that PDF file, pass it off to AI Builder, which I've already set up, extract the data out of the form, pass those individual fields to a Power Automate desktop flow that's going to run locally to then launch that web app and populate the web app with the fields that we've extracted. So in a second here, we'll actually see the web app. Here we go. And we're going to see each field automatically get populated there. It's going to then click Create, which then submits the form. We get a record of all the, the information that was submitted. And let's just go ahead and compare that to the form to see how good of a job it did. So now when we compare the input on the left to the output on the right, we can see that AI Builder did a really good job here. So pretty much everything looks identical to the handwritten section on the left to the digital section on the right. Now, the last part of this flow is sending an email of the original AI Builder output. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that for a second. And now this is the uh, information as it was pulled into AI Builder. And what you can see here is that there's a couple fields here from the handwritten input that AI Builder put some extra spaces in there. And what I'll show you in the section where I actually show you how I built the Power Automate desktop flow is how I overcame that by actually just putting a little tiny script to remove extra spaces from the output. So now I want to show how can you actually build an AI builder model? Well, we're on the AI builder screen here. We're going to go to form processing. We're going to give this a name. We'll call this uh, food sign up model. Once we do this, we do need to give it what are the field names we expect to get back. So let me go ahead and populate that really quickly. OK, so I just quickly added the field names that we expect in this form. The next thing we need to do is we need to give it some sample data so we can start training this model. So let's go ahead and create a new collection. And now let's go ahead and add some files. 
In this case, we're gonna add both the digital files and the handwritten files because they're all part of the same form type. So here are the five digital files. We'll go ahead and upload those. And now I'm gonna add the handwritten files as well. And now that we did that, we have 10 documents in this collection. Let's go ahead and analyze this and then we'll start training the model. Okay, so now at this step, what we need to do is we need to start training the model with what are the different fields and how do they map to the data that we just specified for the fields that we're going to use in the model. So notice as I'm hovering over text, it's actually picking up different parts that we can select. I'm going to do the event name first, so I'm actually going to drag this over company cookout. I'm going to tag that to event name. I'm now going to select the date and I'm going to tag that to date. We'll pick this for time location, type of food, name, phone, alternate phone, and lastly, email. And now what's really cool about this is we can see that each of the things that we just tagged are highlighted on this form. When I go to the next form, it actually automatically picked out some of the tags are ready for us. So you can see even after just one item, it's already training the model for us, which is really awesome. So now I'm just going to pick out the new fields that need to be tagged here. Okay, so I just updated that. We'll go next. I'm going to continue this process for the next three digital files, and then we're we'll fast forward to the handwritten section. Okay, so now we're looking at our first handwritten example here. And we can see that it's already doing a really good job, even without any training of handwritten samples. So let's go ahead and now input what are the other fields it's missing here. So we'll go ahead and select the event name. We'll select the location and we'll select the time. And then I'll repeat this process for the rest of the handwritten ones. We'll actually notice here that it actually didn't quite get this one correct. So I'm actually going to fix this. And that's all. I just had to confirm that change. It's really easy to make little modifications as well. So let's go ahead and select event name. We'll select time. And now I'm just going to fast forward, but I will train the remaining three documents. Okay, so I just completed updating all 10 documents. So I'm going to go ahead and say next. And then what we're going to do here is we're now going to train. So this is going to now use AI to train the model with the 10 sample files that we uploaded. And then this is going to then allow us to take a new form that's been filled out, whether it's handwritten or digital text, and then extract information from that form automatically. Okay, so now what we can see is that the food signup model test we just created is now trained. So let's go ahead and test this. So we're going to go into here and we're going to do a quick test first where we're just going to upload a file that we have from one of our forms. Let's pick one of the handwritten ones. And what we can see is that it did a really good job getting the different fields here. So it got pretty much all of them right, which is pretty amazing. Now what we want to do to make this real, to actually allow this to be exposed inside of Power Apps and Power Automate is we want to go ahead and publish this. Okay, so now it's published and now we can go ahead and actually use this inside of Power Automate and Power Apps. Okay, so now I'm in Power Automate Desktop and let's go ahead and create a new flow so I can show you how I created the flow that I just used in the Power Automate flow. And now at this step, we're assuming that the AI Builder step is already run. And all we're going to do is we're going to set up this Power Automate desktop flow to have variables to pump those values in. So the first thing that we want to do here is we do need to do a web recorder option because we're going to simulate us going to the web app and inputting information into that form. So we'll open up Web Recorder, Microsoft Edge. I'm going to copy the URL for the web app that I want to go to. I'm going to click Start Recording, and I'll paste the URL into here. For some of the fields, I'm going to put some sample information in here. So for the event name, we'll choose Company Cookout. For event date, we'll go ahead and give it a date. For event time, we'll go ahead and give it a sample time. Normally, I would do the rest. I just want to show you a few of these so you kind of get the idea of how to do this on your own. So I'll go ahead and say Finish. And now what this did is it recorded those steps into my Power Automate desktop flow. And the next thing I want to do here is I want to specify some input variables so that I can actually dynamically tell this Power Automate desktop flow what are the values I want to put into that web form. So let's go ahead and create a new one. We'll call this event name. Okay, so we now see that there's a new variable available here. I'm going to go back to the populate text field where I put company cookout and I hard coded that. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that now with that new variable that we just created, event name. Go ahead and save that. And then I'll set up a few more variables for the date and the time. So I now just created variables for event name and event time. I'll go ahead and replace these actions with those variables. Okay, so now it's set up with event name, event date, event time. Let's test that really quickly. And there we go. Event name, date, and time just got inputted successfully. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward to the finished version of the Power Automate desktop flow that I used in the demo. So what I'm showing now is the completed Power Automate desktop flow that I created to take the information from AI Builder and then open up that web app that I created with a form to then take each one of those fields and populate that into the form. Now, previously I had mentioned that with AI Builder, with the handwritten samples, it was detecting spaces where there really shouldn't be spaces. So if I go back to this sample, for example, the output of that had instances where there were extra spaces in some of the fields where there shouldn't have been. And there's a really easy way that I was able to then get around that where I just added a couple of replace text steps where what I would do for any one of these is take whatever the input field is, in this case, the event date, which may have some extra spaces. I'm using some regex here, so I can just do a backslash S plus, and that just says anywhere you find a space, go ahead and replace that with empty. And this is the special empty syntax for Power Automate Desktop. And so I did that for five different fields where I was seeing that I was getting some extra spaces. And then I used the new values, which in this case I call it replaced event date, with the rest of the logic here. If I were to run this, let's just go ahead and run this really quickly. I've got some sample data that we'll put in there. We'll do the replace text operation. We'll go ahead and populate that to each one of the fields. And you'll notice that in this case, there are no fields that have any of the extra spaces because I'm actually putting test value in there that have extra spaces. So I can kind of test that end to end. So now I'm looking at the Power Automate flow that I showed in the demo. First thing we'll see here is that this manually gets kicked off with an input of what is the document type. In this case, there's options for a PDF, JPEG, or PNG file. And the other thing is the actual document itself. You could also have this kicked off by when a, for example, a document gets dropped into a OneDrive file or a SharePoint document library. But for this case, I just wanted to have it pretty simple. So I just manually specify what the document is to start this flow. I then have a step here to just call the AI Builder model, which is then going to process, in this case, the food sign up model that we've created. It's going to specify the type, which in this case is going to be PDF, and then the actual document itself. The next step here is to actually call the Power Automate Desktop action. And this is the full version of the Power Automate Desktop flow that I created locally. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking each one of the outputs of the AI Builder step and passing that in as a parameter to the Power Automate Desktop action. So we can see that basically we've got the event name, date, time, location, and all the other fields that AI Builder collected, just passing that over. And then the last step here is that I was in just sending an email to, in this case, Adele with the submission ID that I was extracting from the web page after it was submitted. And then all of the information that got collected from AI Builder, just passing that back in an email. Thank you all for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments about this, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Once again, everything that I've showed today, I have outlined on my GitHub repository in the description below. So feel free to check that out as well. Until next time, thank you for watching this video.